This is Radar from the Radar Table uh, coming at you with another edition of MLB Observation of Week 12 of this hot stove that ended the 2023 season going into this year's 2024 season. So a lot has happened. So Diego Castillo, the one that we've talked about being acquired off waivers for the Mets, the Diamondbacks, etc. The Yankees picked him up and said, you know what? We're going to DFA Jeter Downs and Oscar Gonzalez and then both of them have been outrighted. You know, I didn't think that Jeter Downs was going to get played because the Yankees pretty much have a set infield. And they have so many outfielders, so I wasn't sure if Oscar Gonzalez was going to play. But I wonder if they're taking the outright assignment, if they refuse it, if anybody's going to pick them up, or they're just going to go to AAA till the Yankees inevitably get injuries on the roster. They also DFA Bubba Thompson, the former Royals outfielder who I think the Reds had. And the Twins picked him up because the Twins, again, Joey Gallo and Michael A. Taylor left them in free agency. We know Byron Buxton's a walking injury. It's those Alex Killerop. So he'll probably get some at bat. Manny Benuevos is taking his talent to China. So is Nick Mart. Marjavesius and never pronounce his name, but those are like starting pitchers who have also relieved, so it makes sense they go over to China. KC Mize and the Tigers avoid arbitration, and Ciano Perez and the Orioles avoid arbitration. Young pitcher for Detroit and veteran reliever for the Orioles. Joe Kuno, the Astros pitcher, has become a free agent, and they've also DFA'd Matt Gage, the Astros. Tommy Edman also avoid arbitration, but got a two year deal because he's a very important part of their team. Play, uh, players Dylan Fife and Dakota Chalmers sign a mind to the D backs. I can see Dylan Fife pitching out of the bullpen this year for them. Angel DFA and Alfonso Rivas because, again, they have a rookie first baseman, Sean L. They just got Dozier this past week on a minor league deal. And the breaking news for the Angels is they signed Miguel Sano to a minor league deal. Again, what does Nick, what does uh, Hunter Dozier and Miguel Sano have in common? They're a former third baseman who one is one has ever been healthy and has never been a great fielder. And Dozier had to move over the first base in DH and play the outfield because the Royals had a gluttony of infielders. So the both of them are going to be vying for time at DH and maybe even third base because we know Anthony Rendon never stays healthy. And Chanel's a rookie. So that gives them an opportunity for both those guys. That's why Rivas is not needed. Tigers signed Drew Anderson my other deal. Again, I don't think the Tigers are playoff teams. So I can see Drew Anderson pitching either as a bullpen or a lever. O signed Daniel Johnson to a minor league deal. And again, unless there's major injury, like Tedrick Mullins is hurt at a time. And, and like Aaron Hicks got a good chance to play for the Orioles this past season when they made the playoff. Maybe Daniel Johnson plays. Angels signed Robert Stevenson with a three-year, $33 million deal. This journeyman starting pitcher who's bounced around as a reliever as well. I know with the Reds for a bit. And then he got to Tampa Bay and pitched really well down the stretch for them. That's his best time he's ever been a pitcher. So three years and $33 million to him. The Obviously, the Rays weren't going to retire because that's not their M.O. The Angels, they throw their, they throw money at everything. Dozier and Sano don't cost a lot of money. But again, Otani left. Uh, I think they both got Fletcher and Jared Walsh's contracts hopefully off the books for them. And at the end with that, that just means they're not paying those three guys this season. And only Mike Trout is making guaranteed money. So that's a so they have some money to go around. White Sox signed John Brevia to a deal. New pitching coordinator, like I was working for the White Sox, Brian Bannister, who worked in San Francisco, speaks highly of him. Again, I don't care how many relievers the White Sox signed to major minor league deals or any starting pitcher. At least they're doing it. Under the previous regime, I'd always wonder why we have no starting pitching depth. And you're just like, well, those guys aren't haven't shown to be good. My response is, if you sign guys who have pitched in the major leagues to minor league deal or position player, that when injuries arise or performance issues happen and guys are not performing, you can turn to somebody and use them on a minor league deal. It doesn't cost you a lot of money. It's not guaranteed. You can always cut them if you really want to. And I feel like that's a good move by the White Sox signing this guy if he comes highly praised. Rugnan Odor, remember him? The guy who punched Jose Batista and at one point was an all-star second baseman because he was hitting 20, 30 home runs. You know, driving a lot of runs, but he struck out a lot and wasn't the world's greatest defensive player. He think his talent is Japan. So a home run slugging, a slugger, home run hitter would be perfect in Japan. Astros announced that Ken Caminiti, their greatest third baseman, and also the Padres' greatest third baseman ever, and Renee Cardenas, the Spanish broadcaster, are going into their Hall of Fame. Both of them obviously deserve it because I just said he's the best third baseman in their history. Red Sox have hired pitching guru Kyle Body to be a special advisor because they're really trying to change up the philosophy with pitching. I just don't understand the Chris Hill trade. That's just me. If they're going to focus on pitching. A role is Chapman, who just won a World Series with the Texas Rangers. And I know he's won a World Series with the Cubs. And I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if he was at the, he'd ever won with the Yankees. Because I don't think he was on the Yankees team 
when they won it in the mid-2000s. He's still with the Reds. But again, Pittsburgh signed him. They're not a playoff team. They can do what they did. The Royals did with Chapman last season, flipping at the deadline to a team, and that could help someone out. So that's a good move for the Pirates. Tyler Nevin, the Tigers said, never mind, and he's going traded back to Baltimore where he already was. But again, the Orioles have a set infield between Mountcastle at first base and um, and having uh, Urias and having... God, why am I blanking on the guy who won Rookie of the Year? I'm just... I am just like... That's that's a, just a gap in my memory because I'm really tired. I got up earlier than I wanted to and couldn't fall back to sleep. So, yeah, I'm just like Gunnar Henderson. Like he plays third base and shortstop, and Jackson Holiday is considered the number one prospect. So they already have a bunch of infielders. So again, I don't see him playing that much, but whatever. Dodgers are hedging their bets with the Otani not pitching for a while, and Walker Bueller coming back from injury, May and Gosselin coming back from injury, and even if they sign Kershaw, he's coming off injury. And Glass now is never healthy. That even though James Paxton had been the most healthiest, he was somewhat productive with the Red Sox this year. So give him a one-year $11 million deal. That's, again, just more pitching depth than we always say to the Dodgers. They don't have enough pitching. Maybe they can focus on some reliever because, like, Josh Hader's off the market. Robert Stevens is off the market. Like, they got to get somebody. Jeff McNeil, nicknamed the Squirrel, won the LJ, L, LPGA Tourney Championships for the celebrities on National Squirrel Day. So I thought that was interesting in relation to him. Joey Gallo is taking his talents to Washington, and he was somewhat okay for the Twins this year, sliding around first base, third base, the outfield, and DH. With the Nationals, with Nick Senzel getting a full chance at third base, I don't know if he's going to get start to third base, but they don't have a set outfield, and Manessis will definitely need some protection to line up at first base or DH. So that's a quality move. I think that will be a good idea for Joey Gallo, and maybe for the Twins were vi- trying to vie for the playoffs, and maybe the Nationals, who we all know are going to be a bad team and be in last place, he can just quietly stay healthy and get 20, 30 home runs maybe and become a trade deadline asset. I don't know. Phillies signed Colby Allard, the former top pitching prospect that was on like Atlanta and Texas and has bounced around to name some. Maybe after, you know, Nola, Wheeler, R- 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 uh, Suarez, Ranger Suarez, and Tejon Walker, that there's some openings and maybe in the fifth spot or as organizational depth. And that's a very good move because, again, not costing you a lot, and you just need pitching depth because, again, pitching, pitching, pitching. Brewers announced that one of their greatest players of all time, Ryan Braun, is going to be in the walk of fame. Now, obviously, we know Gorman Thomas, Jeff Jenkins are two of their greatest outfielders, and Robin Yount, who plays shortstop and center field, is their other greatest outfielder. So Ryan Braun fits into that mold of one of the best outfielders ever had, no matter about steroids or not. That's just a Brewers fact, numbers-wise. Brewers also signed Reese Hoskins to a two-year, $34 million deal. They decided not to retain Carlos Santana, and they cut Rowdy Tellez. And they also said they also traded Mark Cannon in the offseason and let Brian Anderson go in free agency. So they don't have a guaranteed guy to play first base or DH. So Reese Hoskins, two-year, $34 million deal. I think it's a lot of money for a guy who missed the whole entire season. But when healthy, he was a somewhat productive player for the Phillies. You can expect 20, 30 home runs out of this guy. So that will be helpful for Brewers' team that needs offensive – protection. If maybe Christian Yelich actually bats the middle of the lineup, like third, where he should be because he's their best all-around player on paper, and you put Reese Hoskins in the middle of the lineup, maybe. Angels also, besides Robert Stevenson, spent $9 million on Matt Moore, who I still think could be a quality fifth starter for teams that just need innings eaten and not just as a reliever. But again, Angels, I give them credit. They've lost some players in free agency and trades, and so they need some bodies in the bullpen, but that's just veteran pitchers that like the Dodgers or other teams that need relievers to make the playoffs, not going to have them. Marlins signed Trey Mancini to a minor league deal. Not sure if Josh Bell is still on the team. But they said swapped, remember, Josh Bell for Garrett Cooper, essentially, in, multi- in separate trades. And they signed, uh, you know, Yuli Gurriel to a minor league contract to start the season last year. And it turned out that he had a pretty good time in a part-time role for them. But I can see Trey Mancini because, again, they have a set outfield. No need for him to ever play the outfield again. I think the Cubs were too early to cut him. They were right to cut Hosmer early because he's never been a good offensive player. Maybe with a minor league deal with a team like the Marlins, yeah, they made the playoffs last year, and Scoot Schumacher was managing one of the best managers. Not as much pressure as it is when he was on Houston or playing in a big city like Chicago. So I feel like they don't have a set first baseman or DH, so I feel like that's a good move out of them. The Yankees also announced their double-A team, the Summers Pirate, will celebrate 
historic significant culture of the diner and have their jerseys. So I thought that was cool. You should go look up what their jerseys will look like. Sad news, as we mentioned, like Cubs stuff most recently. Ryan Sandberg announced he's starting the cancer treatment for metastatic prostate cancer. So the greatest second baseman in Cubs history. And probably Tyler Ryder Hornsby and Joe Morgan is probably the top three second baseman of all time. And Jackie Robinson, you can say his top five if you want to. That's just bad, sad news and prayers up to him. Christian Arroyo, the former Red Sox utility player, former Cleveland, and I think maybe was he on Pittsburgh? I'm not sure, but I know Cleveland for sure. Is a, is a, is a former shortstop who's played a lot of second base, third base, outfield with the Red Sox and first base. The Brewers, as we mentioned, lost a lot of guys in free agency, and they have two youngsters, Terang and Monastero, playing second base and third base respectively. And they're not 100% sold on either one of them. So it's good to have Christian Arroyo on a minor league deal as insurance. Rockies signed John Curtis to a minor league deal. I can see him pitching some innings for them and being flipped. The Yankees signed Louis Torres to a minor league deal. And the Yankees are going with a rookie catcher. Forgot his name, but they're going with a rookie catcher because, again, they when they knew they were out of the race, they just went all their young guys, right? They still have Ben Rover, who they got from Minnesota, who's never healthy. And they obviously traded... Hikashalka, whatever, I can't pronounce his name. Kyle Shaw, who was played for Team USA in the World Baseball Classic, to San Diego. So, with Rover never being healthy and never a rookie catcher, Luis Torrance is always going to be known as a good quality second or third or fourth string catcher. So, good deal there. Texas signed Jared Walsh, Matt Duffy, and Blake Taylor in minor league deal. Matt Duffy could be like what they have with Brad Miller in recent years. Natural born shortstop who played every single position, infield, outfield, or DH. For his, they, that's flexibility. Jared Walsh, was it made the ultimate team, I think, once to the Angel, and he just went downhill of production-wise and injury-wise. So, because, as I mentioned, like, Mitch Garver is gone in free agency. They don't have a set outfield uh, outside of uh, hoping Evan Carter continue his pace that he did as a rookie at the end of the season and in the playoffs with, obviously, Adoles Garcia. Young is covered at third base, and, and Nathaniel Lowe's covered at first base. And obviously, they got Seager and Simeon, probably the, one of the best middle infield combos. So, infield is set. Catcher is set with Jonah Heim. But Jared Walsh or Matt Duffy can get some at-bats at first base or, for Matt Duffy's case, as a utility player. And Jared Walsh may be playing some left field, even though he's not a left fielder. Those are just, like, good, heady, minor league moves that may work out for you. Orioles have signed Ronald Guzman minor league deal. And I don't know if the former Rangers Yankee first baseman is going to be in spring training as a, as, as a first baseman outfielder because... That's what I know him for, but they, again, the Orioles are set in the infield and the outfield. Or is he going to try his hand at pitching, which is what he did with the Giants, I think, last year? I don't know, but we'll see what happens there. Rangers traded J.P. Martinez, the outfielder, to Atlanta for a minor league pitcher named Tyler Owens. Again, clearing 40-man roster spots for some of the moves they've made. Cardinals have signed Josh James to a minor league deal. And... White Sox have announced this. John Schifrin is now their new play-by-play guy. I'll get to him more in a little bit. Jock Peterson has signed a deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks with an option for a second year. Money details haven't been announced. But I'm going to say this about the White Sox. You know how many times the Dodgers were looking to try to trade Jock Peterson when he was their center fielder or the right fielder or the left fielder? Never once bit. When he was a free agent, he could have gone to the White Sox many times. And the Sox did not sign him deals, and he stayed with San Francisco back-to-back years. There was a perfect opportunity. The White Sox don't have a right fielder, okay? They do not have a right fielder. That that experiment with the with their with the rookie third baseman Oscar, I can't remember his name because I can't sleep the pride, but the point is, it'll come to me in a moment, is that he looked lost. Okay? He did not look ready to be an everyday right fielder. And I never know what's happening with you you want to assess but his cousin or brother, whatever he's is he ever gonna come? So the Sox don't have a right fielder, and I love Gavin Sheets. He's a good offensive player, but he's not an outfielder. So the Sox don't have a right fielder. So Jack Peterson, you'd be like, well, he's not a great offensive player. The dude played center field for Team Israel, this World Baseball Classic, and showed that he still has the ability to be an everyday outfielder, okay? He could be your right fielder. You take someone on, one of the many dudes you sign a minor league deal, and they'd be your fourth outfielder, and he comes at defensive replacement. Oscar Colas, I think that's what his name was, yeah. So it's like, you could do something like that. But Arizona is signing him to DH, which I feel like is a waste of his talent. He could play outfield or DH. But we chain him in Lewis Gurriel in left field. And Corbin Carroll, the reigning rookie of the year. And then you have Alec Thomas, who's won a gold glove. And Jake McCarthy is a backup outfielder. That's a pretty good outfield. The Diamondbacks seem to know what they're doing there. Rangers, as I mentioned, they're clearing roster moves. They signed David Robertson to an $11 million deal to be the setup man for, for Jose Leclerc. As I mentioned, Will Smith, Chapman, and Chris Stratton, just to name some relievers, have left the, the Rangers. 
The Astros knew that they're losing Hector Neris, Ryan Stanek, and some other guys in free agency, and they're like, okay. So they went and got Josh Hader, and they've Alec Presley. They're trying to bulk up their because they don't want to they they don't want to be second place to the Rangers. The Rangers go, you know what? We don't want to be second place. Okay, so guess what? They don't want to be second place. So they're like, even though Leclerc pitched pretty well during the stretch and was pretty good in the postseason and the World Series. It's the first time he's been good since they gave him that huge contract before he missed time with injury. That signing Robertson, even though he's old, he's been a closer and a setup man. That is a good move to make their bullpen have a good one-two punch. I don't think it's better the Astros with Abreu, the youngster Brian Abreu and Rafael Montero as the other guys after Presley and Hayter, but they're trying. Obviously, the Rangers, Martin Perez, Jordan Montgomery, just to name some, they're going to free agency. But... It's going to be a battle between the two Texas teams, and I think that's going to be very good. Now, Joe Maurer is the first player in all four big, all four you know sports leagues, baseball, basketball, and hockey, to be the number one pick to play for his birth state or Providence and play 15-plus seasons for the same team and get into the Hall of Fame. So that is bearing the lead. Joe Maurer got into the Hall of Fame as a first ballot Hall of Famer. Ty Elton got in on his sixth year, and Adrian Beltre got in on his first year. Oh, that is going to be a whole entire other video because it's a lot to talk about and it's already been a long time in this video. Getting to the White Sox play-by-play -play guy. Schifrin, he is eight years older than me. He went to Dartmouth College, studied journalism while pitching for the team there. So again, former player, gets how he gets into the college, studies journalism, and he worked for News 12 in New York where he moved to the news side. That, that led to his work as a New York-based correspondent for ABC News. Contributing to Good Morning America and Nightlife. Then he joined Eastman in 2020, initially called the KBO League for the network when they were running out of stuff. He's caught mostly college sports in addition to the G League and the Summer League games. This will be his first play-by-play -by, -play by for a team. He'll become the second black television play-by-play -play announcer and MLB joining David Sims. I'm not hating on this guy. I've never heard of him. I don't know anything like that. But you're looking at Mr. Person right here who went to college and did everything right. I took every course I was supposed to. I put up with all the crap at the college I went to. And I tried to get internships, and the internship coordinators didn't do anything for me, okay? And look where I'm at. No job on my resume anywhere in broadcasting. Like, this is why sometimes I'm just annoyed by some of the things. But Tony Walters and Colin McHugh both announced retirement. You'll say Tony Walters, 31, is pretty young. But, you know, the wear and tear on a catcher makes sense. Now, the former Rocky, Cubs, Dodger, and at one point Cleveland Indians drafted him, has announced that he's going to be accepting a coaching position with the Rockies. So, do you know what? You want to stop playing baseball and go into coaching? Go right ahead. So happy trails to Tony Walters on your career. And one thing I want to mention is I always wonder why the Rockies sometimes lined him up at second base. Well, the answer is he was an infielder before he became a catcher. So you know what? You learn something new every day. Backup catchers are not the top of my brain knowledge. Also retiring is Colin McHugh, the Naperville res, uh, you know, native from Illinois. He's a former middling starting pitcher with like the Mets and the Rockies. And then he had a consistent period where he was very good relying on in the rotation behind Dallas Keuchel as their number two guy when they were starting off with those 100 loss seasons and then eventually making the playoffs early and then winning the and then going to the World Series, you know, being a playoff team. He was not on those Astros teams. I mean, he was on one of those Astros teams that won the World Series in 2017. He joined the Braves in 2022. That was already after the Astros when they had too many starting pitchers because they got Verlander and Cole and all those other guys to help them win. Then he got bumped to the bullpen and pitched really well as a multi-inning reliever, setup man. And he did his job. He, was, he pitched whatever the Astros wanted him to and reinvented himself and then went to Tampa Bay. This out with the Red Sox during the pandemic season but felt like he wasn't healthy enough so it didn't matter to do that shortened season. Then he was in Atlanta where he was consistently a good relief pitcher for them and made the playoffs. So it's all said and done. With, you finished with a re winning record of 71-47, and 47, a 372 ERA, 967 strikeouts. You played for five teams, made the playoffs a good amount of time between Houston, Tampa Bay, and Atlanta. You got to start your career as a starting pitcher, and you got to end your career as a reliever, and you got one World Series ring. I think that's a pretty good career for, for anyone. And at 36, I think it's time. Happy trails to him. Now then. I want to tell you about the Hall of Fame because I want to just briefly talk about it because we're running out of time here and that's a separate video. So again, thanks for listening to MLB Observation of the Hot Stove, which was again, this was week number 12, ending 2023 season, going to 2024 season.
for on the radar tab block, I'm radar. Last thing I want to say on here is the percentages of the guys getting in. Is what I want to get at. Is that Beltre got in 95.1%. I don't understand, last thing, how he doesn't get in unanimously. Glad Tide Elton got in at 79.7. Joe Maurer got in 76.1. Just over the 75% mark. Billy Wagner got 73.8. He's so close to getting in, that annoyed me. Steroid user Gary Sheffield got 63.9. Andrew Jones got 61.6. Like, he should get more. Carlos Beltran got, got 57.1. That's good. Steroid user a got 34.8. Steroid user Mandy Ramirez got 32.5. Utley got a 28.8. I'm not sure if I'd consider Chase Utley a top 10 second baseman. But, okay, Omar Vizquel still 17.7 when he's one of the greatest shortstops of all time. I know we had off the field things that are coming to light, but come on. Bobby Abreu, 14.8, just stays on the ballot like Jimmy Rollins, who I don't think is a top 10 shortstop. Andy Pettit, who took steroids and admitted it, stayed on the ballot at 13.5. And Mark Burley, who, in my opinion, if he pitched until he was 40, it would be a lot clearer that he's a Hall of Famer, but he's just he's just below it. 8.3. K-Rod, who should be in the Hall of Fame, but again, closers are not very well looked into, is a 7.8. Tor Hunter is a 7.3 because he's just a good player. And David Wright at 6.2, which is enough to stay on the ballot. Jose Batista, late bloomer, doesn't have enough to just get it to be considered anything, but good player, so he gets six votes at 1.6. Same thing with Victor Martinez, who is a very good offensive catcher. That's all we can say. Bartolo Colon, he pitched a long time. I think he won a Cy Young, 1.3, five votes. Matt Holliday was an all-star outfielder, one of the greatest Rockies. Got one vote with four votes. I mean, 1% with four votes. Eddie Gonzalez, who was also a late bloomer, and then the end of his career didn't go the way he wanted to, retired early. Three votes, 0.8%. Brandon Phillips, took him a while to figure it out as an everyday second baseman, and then his career went down a little bit. Didn't have the long career that other guys have, so he got one vote at 0.3. And Jose Reyes was a very good offensive shortstop, probably tied for the greatest shortstop in Mets history. Zero votes. Again, domestic violence off the field, and he was an all-star. Not a Hall of Famer. And James Shields was a middling starting pitcher. I don't know who was also available to be put on the ballot, but, you know, Another day, another dime. Thanks for listening. I'm Radar. See you guys next time.